Hello, and welcome to the Over 50 Health and Wellness Podcast. I'm your host, Kevin English, founder of The Silver Edge. Our mission at The Silver Edge is to inspire men and women in their 50s, 60s, 70s, and beyond to live their strongest, healthiest, most fulfilling lives. In this podcast, we share stories of amazing individuals who are doing just that to help motivate you to become the healthiest version of yourself, regardless of your age. And now, on to today's podcast. My guest today is Grant Davis. Grant is 69 years old and the creator of the Aging Strong Method. He has a 40-year background in fitness and exercise performance and is certified by the American College of Sports Medicine, TRX, Dynamic Neuromuscular Stabilization, Viper, Kettlebell, and Nesta Sports Nutrition. Grant is also in week three of his recovery from COVID-19, and he's just started an initiative he's calling Project 69 to help others in their 60s and 70s get strong and in shape. Grant, welcome to the show. Thanks, Kevin, so much for having me. I very much appreciate it. Yeah, and likewise. So I certainly want to talk to you about your what you're doing today in fitness for yourself and for your clients. And I definitely want to dive into the whole COVID um, and recovery and how that's going. But let's let's back up a little bit and start at the beginning. Can you tell us what you were like as a child? Were you active as a boy? Did you play sports? I was really active, uh, Kevin, actually, uh, starting from as way back as I can remember, um, you know, mainly in unstructured sports, right? We had a bunch of neighborhood kids, uh, mostly boys, but some girls too. And we would, uh, you know, we'd choose a couple of captains and play kickball, uh, touch football, baseball, softball. Uh, but I was in Little League too. That was probably the, um, uh, the ultimate structure, I guess, uh, that I was involved in early in life. And uh, so that was good, too. But we we played a lot, you know, unstructured play, which I think is really important for creativity for kids. I agree wholeheartedly. And I think our generation probably would be more likely to have that kind of a childhood, that unstructured play. I haven't heard it put that way, but that's well said. I think that today with all the technology and other dis- distractions, that's uh, it's a little less common. So sounds like you were fairly active as, as a young person, played some, like you said, some structured baseball. What about as you were aging up and into high school? Were you still fairly active at that time? Yeah, very much so. I was kind of a jack of all trades, master of none, so, so to speak. I played uh, on a really good junior high basketball team. We won the uh, northern part of Pittsburgh League, and I still, my kids really laugh at it. They have a huge belly laugh when I show them the trophy because it was a little basketball player. It's two inches high, but we beat we beat like you know 15, 18 teams to get there. Uh, so uh, you know today for showing up, you know their trophies are two feet high. So I kind of yeah. just roll my eyes. I mean I love my kids and they're they're actually they're probably uh, better innate uh, innately talented than I was. But um, you know I have this try hard eth- ethic work ethic that. Uh, makes me what what I am, I think. And so uh, I always uh, tried hard. But yeah, I played junior high basketball. And then mainly, although I had a, a junior varsity touch in football and basketball, my main um, sport in high school was track. Now, way back then, they um, structured it in terms of yards. So I ran the 440 instead of the 400 meter. And uh, so that was a lot of fun. Uh, I ran for a kind of a sports factory high school in Pittsburgh called North Allegheny. And then I transferred, my dad got transferred actually to uh, the biggest high school in New Hampshire. And they, they were, um, uh, I'd say the state is uh, less competitive than Pennsylvania, but they had a very, very good track team, oddly enough. And um, this is sort of an off topic thing, but they had the best uh, javelin uh, throwing team in the nation that year. I think we had a kid, the top kid threw 220 and then Another kid threw 210, and the third uh, kid uh, threw, I believe, the javelin 185. So, you know, really competitive there, but we had good people uh, in all events. My best time was about 51.5 on a lousy, you know, sort of a cinder slash dirt track. So I was competitive, but not outstanding, I would say, but liked it. 
So a multi-sport athlete in in high school, it sounds like track was kind of your main your main outlet then. And what where did you go after after high school? Did you were you in college? Um, yes, I went to uh, Purdue University in Lafayette, Indiana, and I took a look at the uh, football and basketball practices, but you know, and track also. And uh, the first two were absolutely a non-starter. <laughs> Kids were big and fast, right? And um, but the track coach was a very courteous guy, and he said, "Well, your time's pretty good, but." We have uh, a couple of guys at 47 and change, a uh, flock of guys at 49 and 50. I'll let you practice with the team, but, you know, I probably wouldn't run you in meets. And so I politely thanked him and then joined a club team with a lot of castoffs, I would say, a football tight end, a couple of basketball players, and, and myself, uh, the crew team at, at Purdue. So we had an eight-man shell, and I was actually the um, – uh, the first guy after the coxswain in the beginning, and I was the stroke. It's a misnomer that the coxswain calls out the stroke count, but the the team goes after my uh, cadence. Got it. So so some rowing in college then. Yes. Okay. And yeah. I'll tell you, our coach was really good. I didn't know it at the time, but <clears throat> after I left, he went to Wisconsin. Uh, Wisconsin had the best crew team in the Big Ten. I don't think they were competitive like Yale and Harvard, let alone uh, across the ocean in the UK with Cambridge and uh, Oxford, but they were quite competitive. And he was a big believer in uh, running stadium steps, and then every other day we'd lift weights too. And that was my first exposure, really, to lifting uh, serious weights. And so we did, you know, the basics, uh, deadlift and, of course, rowing and press above head and all, all the basic functional things, you know, and, and I went from probably about 175 or 177, I gained about 10 pounds of, of muscle. And we did so much running and rowing that uh, my body fat was, I don't know, we didn't measure it at that, at that time, but probably about, you know, seven to nine percent, something like that. I suppose that would do it to you, right? If you're in the weight room a few days a week and then you're doing all the, like you said, the running, the steps running and the, yes. and the rowing, it, that'll right. certainly do it to you. And you're at, at that time in your life where you got all the, uh, the hormonal advantages and everything as a young man. Yes. So uh, <laughs> certainly certainly in shape then through your through your collegiate years, I, I would say very in shape. Yes. Uh, what about later in life? You know, uh, a lot of us um, have similar <laughs> stories. We're very active and maybe involved in sports through high school, maybe even at the collegiate level. But then, you know, we we're, we're into careers. We we start having we're, we're getting married. We're having kids. What was that time in your life like? Was were you still maintaining um, fitness? Was it as important? Uh, what did that look like? Yeah, it was very important for me, Kevin, and I think it has to do with. Um, I'm not a psychologist or anything, but I, I think a lot of people are imprinted uh, by their family or what happens to them when, when they were young. And I was always, um, not always, but uh, when I was young, I was kind of weak, actually. You know, genetically, uh, I would classify myself as a mesomorphic ectomorph. You know, the Greeks classify as to bodybuild. I'd put you in the same category, probably a mesomorphic ectomorph and I was always uh, kind of skinny and you know pretty weak. I think I had uh, a mixture of type 1 which is the endurance fibers and type 2 uh, you know the strength fibers so I, I was never really innately strong like if you look at somebody who looks like they stepped off the cover of a bodybuilding magazine right and they you know you say man have you been lifting for a long time and they said no I've never lifted and uh, you know I just say boy they're pr pretty fortunate, you know. And yeah. so um, that's sort of a long preamble to, to say that when I got out of Purdue, I just joined Golds in, in uh, uh, Pittsburgh and lived there for quite a while until I moved to California. I'll talk about that later. But and, and lifted probably steadily three at least three times a week uh, heavy. And, you know, I, I would say I gained another, oh, you know, eight or 10 pounds of muscle to come in the one in the one nineties. And, um, you know, it's funny people, people say, Oh, I created my body in 40 years. That's not, I don't think that's true. I think you create your, your body by lifting in about th 
three to five years, and then it's a maintenance game. And then what I'm going through right now is is a gradual decline. And that and that's inevitable, uh, right? Where no matter what we do, we're, aging is eventually going to win. But there's a way, you know, there's several routes to age, and certainly we we want to talk a little bit more about that. So, yes. it, in terms of you were hitting the gym, lifting heavy, building building lean muscle mass. Were you doing any kind of conditioning work at the time or was it primarily just getting, getting after the weights? You know, the latter, uh, honestly. And, um, that makes an okay segue to my introduction to CrossFit. Cause I, I was, well, for me and, and how I was, um, composed in terms of muscle fiber and so forth, my, my lifts were fairly competitive. I think I had a top bench of three Oh five. Uh, when I was, you know, let's say circa 27, 28 years old. And um, I squatted. I was never a good squatter. I, I didn't pull much, maybe 340, 335, something like that. And uh, similar with my uh, deadlift. Uh, but, you know, I just loved to row and, and press overhead. I was um, push pressing, not a strict press, but push pressing uh, anywhere from 140 to 155. And when I got to CrossFit, I'll, t I'll tell you, Kevin, you'll appreciate this because you're in it, and I used to be in it, but the, the CrossFit coach at this small box, right, he said, hey, you, you want to join CrossFit, what have you done? I said, I've done some heavy lifting. He said, well, you look good. And he said, why don't you try Grace? And he said, how old are you? And I said, well, I'm in my late 50s, you know, at, at that time, I was 58. And so it, it he said, well... For seniors, you can go 95 or 115. I said, nah, I'll do the 135, right? It's uh -huh. pretty, pretty strong. 30 reps, if people don't know, it's 30 repetitions of essentially a clean from the floor and a press overhead or a jerk overhead, right? So I didn't drop the bar for 10 reps. And he and he he said, well, this is a race. I think you might have started out fast. I uh -huh. clipped off 10 reps in about 45 seconds. And then... To get the last 20, you know, it took me uh, took me probably about three, three and a half minutes to go. And uh, so I learned my lesson. And then I did Fran, right, the, the thrusters in the pull-up, yeah. yeah. 21, 15, 9. And there was something I was, I probably wouldn't have done it again unless somebody paid me like a grand. It was so exhausting. But that lit a fire under me. And I thought, you know what? I can't do this. I'm way, way out of my freaking comfort zone. I love it, so I'm going to do it. And that was my introduction to CrossFit. I think you did. You ended up doing very well in CrossFit. Is that right? I, I think you were you ranked fairly high in your age group. Yeah, I I was in um, the the highest age group, the 60 and above. And in 20 um, 2011, I was uh, 20th in the Open. But while learning a combination, you know, of the push presses and training really hard for that and trying to learn the butterfly pull up, which is a faster pull up. It's not strict, as people probably know, but uh, it's very gymnastic, very momentum uh, dominated. So I hurt my uh, right uh, uh, delt, so <laughs> I couldn't get on to the uh, open, you know, but I consider myself pretty good, you know, 20th out of... Uh, Oh, gosh, that year there were probably 500 plus entrants. I think today there's, I think, thousands. I don't know. Yeah. I haven't haven't yeah. done it competitively for a while. But, um, you know, I was third in Southern California. So um, but, you know, what happened, Kevin, is there's a lot of people that dropped out uh, as we go on from I think there was five open exercise uh, wads or workout of the day that you had to complete. And uh, there's probably 50 serious, you know, people over 60. Uh, most of them were actually ex-special forces. I talked with a SEAL one time. I won't go into it in depth at all, but just for 10 seconds is that, you know, he said, well, he wound up the conversation by saying, well, for a civilian, you're, you're not that bad. <laughs> so I had to laugh. You know, those guys are exquisitely mentally tough. Indeed. Yeah. And, and certainly you can see how that would transfer over to something like um, a competitive CrossFit. So you had you had your CrossFit phase. Um, what's where? How did you transition out of CrossFit and what what came next? Well, let me back up. 
I, I do want to know yeah. what how you transitioned out. But um, at that time, were you were you coaching folks, or did that come later? I, when when did that, the coaching come along? Yeah, good good question, Kevin. That that came later. I essentially remodeled myself. Um, I was in uh, medical sales and management for some uh, real big companies, probably headed by Medtronic. And I also um, was a sales person and a manager for a blood services company called Hemonetics for a long time, actually. Uh, but I continued to lift um, twice on the weekends and when I could fit it in once during the weekdays. And um, so I've had a lot of medical experience. I've been by the anesthesiologist watching open hearts and uh, total hips and things things like that. And uh, so I know medicine and I, I could do a deep dive into blood physiology, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but, and I, I enjoyed it. I was probably, I shouldn't say this, I was probably 80% into it, you know, interest wise. And I made my avocation, uh, my vocation. I joined a, a really good biotech company with a, a really expansive uh, fitness center. And so now I continue to work there. I train a couple of people out of my small garage gym, and I work out there too now with, uh, has dumbbells up to 50 pounds and stability balls and a bench and jump rope, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. And I think that's probably what we see a lot of times on your Instagram, for for example, when you're doing a lot <laughs> right. of your workouts. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, correct. Okay. Well, that that gives us a really good biography, if you will, of, of your life and your fitness journey up to now. Let's, um, I want to come back to the, to the fitness specifically, you know, kind of the routine, what, sure. you, what you, what you're doing these days. Um, I want to talk a little bit about diet and recovery, but let's, let's put all that on the back burner for just a minute and talk to sure. us about, um, <clears throat> getting sick. So, we talked about at the, mm. at the intro at the top of the show that you um, you're recovering from COVID nineteen. Uh, you've had it for quite some time. Why don't you tell folks, um, you know, when did you first realize you had symptoms? What was that like? And let's let's talk a little bit about that. Yeah, I I got it on April seventh, so early April. I honestly I don't know how I I got it. It was probably oh, you know, we were all sort of locked in and shelter in place, et cetera. But I would sometimes go to the grocery store and I wore a mask. Um, I think a couple of times I went early on, I didn't use gloves. So maybe I touched a handle of a grocery cart or whatever, but that's all speculative. But I, I did uh, get it. I, I'll tell you, my wife and son had it too. And um, those two just brushed it off like it was not nothing, but in three or four days, it was gone and they were feeling good. For me, I had the chills and a temperature, although the temperature wasn't real high, I developed a very persistent rough cough and um, just extreme fatigue. In fact, I would liken it to, I had Epstein-Barr when I was a kid, when I was 20 and you know, found it tough to walk to the mailbox even. That's a long story too, but I'll skip that. But uh, the fatigue was was enormous and uh, very debilitating. So um, I had it. It wasn't so intense. I've had intense flus, you know, where you throw up and, and your temperatures are 104 and that kind of thing. But um, it wasn't like that. But it was very steady. And uh, for me, it was pretty debilitating, you know. But I got retested a few weeks ago and actually got my release from the Ventura County of, of uh, uh, Department of Health. So um, it really affected me. And I'll tell you, Kevin, interestingly enough, I am now in the position where I would silently judge, not judge in a negative way, but, you know, look at people that I train and let's say um, I'm making this up, but let's say they were, you know, 40 pounds overweight and sedentary and so forth. And I thought to myself, uh, I wouldn't convey it to them like this, but I would think to myself, gosh, You've got a long way to go to be to be good, much less excellent, you know. And I always said, well, let's make goals and we'll get there in little increments. Well, now, you know, that's what I have to do because, um, you know, my coughing and I had some lung uh, insufficiencies, et cetera. 
So my strength is coming back. I uh, lift medium to light weights now for reps. And actually, my my gym, I keep wishing for heavier weights, but maybe it's a good thing that I lift light now. Yeah, I think I saw on one of your Instagram posts, you said that um, uh, that you lost, uh, what, 80, approximately 80% of your endurance, 30% of your strength through this illness? Yes. Yeah. I, I found it hard to walk around the block. I have a little husky uh, combination, uh, uh, sort of a mutt, uh, but he pulls a lot. He loves to walk. I think he wondered what was going on because I was walking pretty slowly. And uh, I told my son, I said, you know, by Christmas, I want to run a seven minute, 30 second mile. And he just sort of uproariously laughed. He said, dad, you'll, you'll never do that. So that kind of lights a fire into me. I, that's a pretty high goal actually. And I'd like to get back to my previous strength, which We'll see. That might be the easier, you know, part of the goal. But uh, my endurance was really um, compromised. Yes. So I suppose also and this illness and your release from it. And now you're like you said, you're working your way back has prompted you. I think you call it a project 69 based on your age. Talk to us a little bit about what that means and and what you're doing in, in that project. Yeah, it's titled, that's right, it's titled because of my age number, and I've lived almost seven decades, you know, and uh, I never imagined it when I was a kid, uh, honestly, uh, you know, to to tell people that you're 69, it's kind of, oh boy, kind of a, uh, a shock, but I almost wear it, you know, being the shape I am or was, <laughs> I'm going to get back there, I'm determined to, is sort of a badge of honor, you know, just like you, uh, deep into your fifties. I mean, it, you know, it's a good thing to work out. I would say that aging is inexorable, you know, it's a certainty and, um, uh, what you could do, you know, the pleasant memories of, wow, I, you know, was really, really good when I was 25. I mean, you're not going to be that way at 65, but I mitigated the age, uh, factor more than I thought I could. And so uh, 69 is, yes, it's based after my age, but I'm kind of charting my progress over the months, maybe a couple times a week on exercises and how I get stronger with an accent on teaching other, you know, people of my uh, uh, age bracket, you know, how to do uh, resistance training. That's that's great. I think that's admirable. It's, uh, it's wonderful that you're doing that. And I think we can all agree that, those of us in our 50s, 60s, 70s, and beyond that are active, that are strong, and are taking our nutrition and recovery uh, seriously are are better equipped to handle things like COVID-19 or the you know or anything, right? Um, I think as Mark Ripito says, stronger people are harder to kill, and th- that's true. Whether that's from a, yes. a, a flu or a virus, from a, a fall, um, <clears throat> so. Certainly working with folks in their 60s and 70s to help them get stronger and realize that um, that that is an option, because I think a lot of folks in that age bracket don't realize that that's an option is great that you're bringing awareness and education to that space. Yes. And I think, honestly, well, two factors. You don't want to be in the healthcare system, in the hospital. First of all, as we know today, because of COVID, right, the, the, it's so contagious. Um, and for older people and, and, you know, with compromised health too, it's, it can be quite dangerous, but also it's inordinately expensive. I just, it's kind of a pet peeve of mine. It's just so pricey. So, you know, these days I think it's, how would I say it's critical to have a long health span. I refer to health span, uh, like Dr. Peter Atia does rather than, live a long lifespan. Like I don't, I don't, you know, I love my parents. They're wonderful uh, people, but um, you know, they, they kind of grinded to a slow halt uh, in their seventies and then passed away at 80. So, uh, you know, I, you know, you never know what's going to be dealt to you, but uh, I think as long as you can weight train and walk and do your, do cardio that you comply with, that's the best thing to keep your health span um, in play. I love that. I love that you call it your your health span. You make the distinction between that and your lifespan, because certainly there's 
a difference in the quality of life of somebody who's say in their seventies and is fit and working on their fitness, nutrition, yes. et cetera, versus somebody who maybe is overweight and less mobile. They're, they're two different quality of lives and those two different paths. So that might be a good segue here. <laughs> I, I did want to talk a little bit about your philosophies on, on working out. It seems like, um, you have a, a an emphasis on strength. Why don't you tell us a little bit about a what what you're doing for for and I, you've already referred to this a little bit and b what you're what you're doing with your clients in terms of actual workout routines, times of days. Uh, what are your what, what's your philosophy? I suspect it's a lot of um, functional uh, loaded movement. It is. It, it absolutely. You hit the nail on the head. It's um, essentially loaded movement, although. You know, we do um, a, a uh, an assessment, a physical assessment relative to mobility and flexibility, right? So if you if you can't squat to parallel, many people can, or at least squat a little bit, right, and get your hands overhead um, and touch your toes and 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 be somewhat flexible and do what we call a hip hinge, you know that that type of thing. I wouldn't load a person, but I I do. In fact, I have programs for them similar to what what I do and I just maybe scale it down a little and I do believe you mentioned the word functional and that's so important uh, because I'll do things like loaded carries right I'll carry a couple of kettlebells or dumbbells in various iterations I'll do a, a squat sometimes a lunge my knees aren't the greatest so I may not touch my following knee to the ground but you know I'll do do some lunges and then um, push and pull or extension flexion. And uh, one right after the other. I see a lot of guys at the gym, young guys, right? They'll do a bench because they want a strong chest. Nothing wrong with that. But then they'll text or talk for three minutes and do another bench. Why not go to a non-competing antagonist like, a, like doing a row? And then same thing with vertical pressing and, and pull downs or pull ups. Uh, and then uh, core, both stability and dynamic core exercises like leg raises, and then um, sort some kind of a plank thing. I, I'll be back to to rollouts. I can't quite do a rollout right right now because I'm coming back from COVID, so I don't want to hurt. But I'll, I'll do um, uh, planks right now and try to hold it for a minute. And I, I know I should be longer than that, but that's what I do. I do um, basically functional things. And um, what does that mean for real life? I mean, we, we don't have to work too hard in modern day America. But, you know, if you have to put things overhead, you know, uh, get out of a low car, climb a hill, climb stairs and so forth, that's what you want to do, even at age 80. And so I think resistance training is, is quite important. And tangentially, it also helps uh, burn calories. Uh, uh, every pound of muscle burns 50 to 70 calories uh, each day. Uh, so I tell people that. And also, it doesn't, you know, young people don't get this, but it really helps bone density. Uh, because if that matrix is good and dense, why then um, if you fall uh, or whatever, you know, bump into something, you may not fracture your bones, which is pretty critical. That goes back to the stronger, stronger people are harder to kill. Um, yes. and absolutely. Um, I, uh, I'm with you there a hundred percent might be a good segue into nutrition. I, you know, I, I kind of look at, um, healthy aging as, as a, as a, say a three-legged stool, you, you've, you've got the, the movement, um, you've got the nutrition and, and recovery and there, you could add other things in there, but let's talk a little bit about your thoughts on nutrition. What, um, what do you personally uh, subscribe and what what are you working with customers or clients as they come to you? What are you telling them about nutrition today? Uh, good question. I basically am of the opinion that I'm not a proponent of any strict or crazy way of eating. Meaning, I don't think there's anything wrong with keto necessarily uh, or vegan uh, necessarily. But a typical morning breakfast might be uh, two or three scrambled eggs. Uh, maybe or maybe not with a piece of cheese in it, and then a protein shake with um, usually orange juice mixed with milk. I know that <laughs> that sounds crazy with yeah. some ice, uh, frozen blackberries or blueberries, and maybe a half a banana and a big scoop of uh, whey isolate protein. So uh, that that'd probably be a, a typical breakfast 
you know, for me. I used to eat cereal a lot, but I think that raised my uh, insulin too much. And so I try to keep my insulin and blood sugar on an even keel. Um, so yeah, I think, I, I think a balanced diet with plenty of vegetables, you know, have that colorful plate, if you will. And, um, so I'm not, I'm not a slave to any super strict, uh, leave macronutrients out type of eating. I will say that energy balance is pretty important. You know, whether you, whether you're an intermittent faster or whatever, if you if your BMR or basal metabolic rate is say 2,000, and you burn let's say 500 calories that day, so if you eat 2,500 calories, why you'll you'll maintain that that weight. And if you want to lose weight, I'm not a big proponent of the Biggest Loser, right? Uh, so any goal is is pretty um, is done with little increments. So that's what I would advise: is energy balance plus fruits and vegetables and lean protein. Yeah, so it sounds like a, a sensible whole foods, uh, avoiding maybe a lot of the processed things and paying attention to the energy balance, which is simply calories in, calories out, right? If you're at a, a caloric surplus, you're going to gain weight. Right. And a caloric deficit, you're going to lose weight. And certainly having an awareness of that is, is Correct. important. Yeah. 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 And what about um, what about supplements? Um, what what are you using for supplements? What do you recommend for folks in their sixties and seventies? Um, do you have specific supplements, or is that more personalized that you recommend? I do take um, some supplements, uh, not a ton of them, but I I do definitely take supplements. I'd say uh, vitamin D D three. It should average maybe four or five thousand IU's per day. I usually, Kevin, take it one, once every three days, maybe uh, two or three little gel caps that have, I think it's 5,000 each. So I'll take three of those a couple of times a week. And I've had my vitamin D measured. Uh, I think it's, uh, oh, 50 to 60. I think it's nanograms for, per deciliter. I forget exactly what, what that uh, is, the measurement um, uh, protocol. Um, I take magnesium. E either fish oil or olive oil, a, a tablespoon of that uh, every other day, and I'll take um, a B vitamin. You know, get to get my uh, my Bs. Usually, it's thirty to fifty milligrams uh, per. Except, I think vitamin uh, B twelve is a little bit lower. It's measured in micrograms instead. So, so I'll take that for for energy. And uh, tr I'm trying to drink more water. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know if I'm hydrated enough, you know, and uh, I do take a whey isolate protein after I work out and people say that are whole food advocates. It's good, you know, to have a beef or turkey sandwich after you work out, but it takes, um, especially older people who don't have quite enough stomach acid, I guess it, it takes a little bit long to digest. So, so the whey protein, especially isolate, which is broken down further than the concentrate uh, gets into your system and your muscle cells a little bit quicker. So, you know, that's, that's what I take. Yeah. And I guess in bro speak, that's your window of gains, right? Shortly after you've, um, worked out or had an intense workout and you've, you've got this window of opportunity to, to really take advantage of, of those calories. And to your point, I suppose, and, and even as we're, as we age, something that absorbs quicker and can be bioavailable quicker than a yes. you know, roast beef sandwich or something it certainly makes sense. Yes. Um, what about what are your thoughts on recovery and the importance of recovery as we age? Well, I think it's I think it's really important. I think that uh, you know, <laughs> I just had myself a laugh. I was looking at a a CrossFit this a few days ago, a wad of Fran, and saw this woman doing it. She was a CrossFit competitor. I just, I was just shaking my head, knowing that I did it, and was in exquisite shape. You know. Um, wad shape many years ago, not many, you know, maybe eight, nine years ago. Now I don't quite have that capacity. So as you get older, you know, your recovery capacity is going to be uh, lower. So sleep, that's kind of my bugaboo. I um, usually get seven, but I, I probably need ideally eight or uh, eight hours and 15 minutes or so. I don't think a lot of people get that, but you should. I think that's num number one. 
Second is stretching and foam rolling after you work out. And I know it takes 10 minutes and, you know, we all have busy schedules, but now I've been able to do that with my reduced uh, uh, schedule somewhat. I'm still working. They have us working from home and doing distance training, but um, I have, uh, I pay more attention to, uh, you know, to foam rolling and stretching after working out. And that's, and you just mentioned it five minutes ago to get that good meal, protein meal after you work out. And I would say, and I'm a little bit short on this too, I need to just quiet down and meditation, you know, and mindfulness is a big thing today. We have a, um, one of our great trainers uh, does that at the uh, biotech company, does it for the general populace too. So uh, mindfulness is quite critical as well. So what you're describing there is that very holistic wellness. Um, there, there's a lot of components in there. There's that building strength and building cardiovascular endurance. There's the yes. nutrition. There's the uh, the proper sleep. And then that that uh, emotional, spiritual, psychosocial kind of side as well, which certainly plays into a complete, healthy individual. And important for, for all stages of life, but cr- I think more critical as, as we age. I, I think that's fair to say. Yes. All right. Well, I, as we're wrapping up here, can you talk a little bit about, you've got a website, you've got a, a Facebook page, you've got Instagram. Why don't you tell people how they can get in touch with you? Tell them a little bit about what your offering, your offerings are on your website, and we'll, we'll kind of wrap up with that. Yeah, thanks, Kevin. My uh, website is called Aging Strong Today, and my email there is agingstrongtoday2019 at gmail.com. We, I'm just about done with it. It's ready to go. I've done about, you know, around 30 demos of your basic exercises. And I have a woman, uh, in fact, I trained her at the biotech company. She's on the younger side of, of uh, our age bracket. She's uh, 50, but she's done some great uh, demos as well. A uh, very competent in terms of movement and, uh, you know, pretty, pretty strong too, but is determined to be a good exerciser. So I have a lot of things there relative to particularly fitness, but also nutrition. And um, we're, we're going to offer some packages too. I haven't quite put that together, but in the next week or so that will be uh, offered. I give away a lot too, because I think that's important to give value, you know, without charging anything, although that's my career and that's what I do for a living right now for uh, the company, but also uh, a lot of people do have quote unquote side hustles. So yeah. this is going to be mine. And I do um, one or two people, they're pretty inconsistent, but you know, out of my garage gym face to face, but now I can do uh, distance training as well. And I'm on Instagram a lot. I think that transfers sometimes to Facebook as uh, aging strong today. And I'll put um, a couple of times a week, I'll put posts up there usually of me either talking, but mostly doing uh, exercises, you know, especially in Project 69 coming back from what I had, COVID-19. Thanks for that. And I'll put all those links in the show notes as well so people can can see where to find you on uh, on Facebook, Instagram, and, and on your on your website. And then finally, I, I guess last question, what would you say to somebody who's Maybe, you know, maybe they're they're in your age group, right? They're late 60s, early 70s, or somewhere in that that vicinity. Maybe they're not in shape and maybe they've never been in shape and they're very concerned because that puts them and they're part of the at-risk population right now. Uh, what do you say to somebody who looks at what you're doing and maybe thinks, well, that's that's intimidating. It seems seems like I don't know, lifting weights. That's can can I do that at my age? How do you how would you talk to that person to get them to take that first step to, to move towards being strong and healthy and capable? Yeah, very good question. Basically, my counsel towards that end is to tell people, look, you know, you didn't get to your current shape in a month, so it won't take just a month to get in superb shape. However, it, it, it can take much less time than you think Let's set a remote goal. Let's say if we're talking today, late May, right? Let's set a goal of, uh, say, Christmas Day and an interim goal of Labor Day, you know, September 1st of 2020. And that'll be our halfway point. I'm making that up. But, uh, you know, and we'll hit little milestones in there. If you like to bike, fantastic. If you like to swim, great. Walking, whatever it is, 
do that because you'll that's sustainable for you, right? And then weight training, I do I do really think it's super beneficial. Um, you know, today, boy, if you're a little leery of, of going to the gym, I know I'm gonna, uh, you know, but that that doesn't mean you have to. However, money that's spent on a little weight set or dumbbells is money well spent, believe me, because it'll strengthen your muscles, it'll burn calories, it'll make you have more capacity, and it'll strengthen your bones too. So it, it's money invested in your in yourself and people take such good care of their homes and their pets right and their cars uh but we only have one goal around so take care of your body too that is very well spoken um i i really appreciate that i think that will resonate with a lot of folks and i i think we're just going to leave it there that was again that was very well said thanks so much for having me on well it was my pleasure and thanks for being here yes sir Well, that's our show for today, folks. If you enjoyed today's episode, please tell your friends and please consider subscribing and giving us a five-star review. All the show notes and much more are available at our website at silver-edge.com. That's silver-edge.com. So until next time, stay strong.